So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about something called metaphysical subtraction. So um, there are many cases in which we speak of social kinds that have certain features revised, separated, or subtracted from them. The goal of this paper is to present a unified theory of social kind subtraction. Now, first part of the paper is identifying what social kind subtraction actually is. It's an unfamiliar notion, so I'm just going to jump right into subtraction and social kinds. So. Uh, to, to give an example, we need to think about dominance theories of race and gender. So according to such theories, whether you are a member of a race or gender depends on your position in relations of domination and subordination. So Sally Hassinger has a famous definition of, definition of woman, whereby to be a woman is to be subordinated in a certain way, right? Um, it, it politically subordinated and oppressed in a certain way. And Charles Mills has a similar definition, a floats a similar definition with respect to uh, racial kinds like black. Now, um, you know, let, let's suppose, for instance, that these dominant theories get the, the truth about metaphysics of gender correctly. Um, then according to such theories, you can't have the kind woman without gender oppression, right? It's necessarily tied to gender oppression. There's a big debate about this then, you know, whether you can have woman without gender oppression. I'm going to avoid that. Um, the point is that nonetheless, even if you can't have a woman without gender oppression, you could plausibly have a gender star. Um, that is, a kind that is just like gender kinds, except without relations of domination and subordination. So you could have woman star, you could have man star, where these ideas are kind of uh, related to the current kind, except uh, slightly different, right? I'm, I'm taking the notion of the kind woman in the actual world, and I'm trying to subtract out the oppression from it. Similarly with race, I'm taking the kind black and white, and maybe I'm altering it so that um, you get some future social kind that isn't wrapped up in gender oppression or racial domination. All right, so this is useful thinking, thinking about revising these social kinds because, you know, maybe we can create new kinds, participate in new kinds uh, in the future, right? So on the one hand, there's this idea of uh, subtraction, and it plays a role in um, the revision of certain social kinds. Right? Instead of having gender, we have gender star. Instead of having woman, we have woman star. Instead of having black, racially black, we have black star, etc. Okay, so one notion of subtraction is found in uh, revising gender. But here's another example, uh, I think, where subtraction plays a role. So consider a gender identity. Uh, Dembra and Sincroft defined an, uh, a person possesses an a gender identity just in case they self-identify as a member of a certain group and they intend to externalize that self-identification. So for example, imagine an individual privately identifies as a woman and they also want other people to recognize them as women in society. Right? So socially, they want people to recognize them in society. In virtue of those two things, they have a, an agential identity of a woman regardless of whether the larger society accepts that identity. Now, um, you know, again, agential identities crucially do not require uptake by others in order to exist, right? You can have an agential identity of man or woman regardless of whether anyone else outside of you thinks that you have that identity. Um, but, you know, what's interesting about this notion of agential identity is that perhaps it can be defined um, from a different direction. So, Ademba uh, Rappesin Croix, they start with um, private self-identification, externalizing that identification. But what if instead, we started with the broad notion of um, social identity, or even the gender kind woman, and we subtracted the uptake or social uptake from that notion. So arguably, we can define an age into identity of woman as a result of removing the facts about uptake from the social identity or gender kind woman. Right. So to have the gender kind, so have the age into identity of woman is simply to. It's like having the social identity woman, except you don't have other people recognizing you as a woman, right? So this is a way in which you can analyze a social kind by making use of a notion of a subtraction, right? Analyzing other uh, social kind, social agent identity woman by uh, removing certain parts. I mean, now I can't promise, I'm not going to defend this in the actual account, but I'm saying something like this could work in social metaphysics. Right? Another example of subtraction is in the case of intersectional kinds. So intersectional kinds in a strong sense are resistant to certain kinds of separation. So black woman, if it's an intersectional kind, is not the sum of black and woman. Or you know, weaker claim, 
being oppressed as a black woman is not the sum of being oppressed as a woman and being oppressed as a black person, right? That there's a crucial insight of intersectionality, intersectional kinds is that you, you simply can't put things together in this nice way and uh, you know, get, get your combined uh, oppression as a result or get your combined identity as a result. Um, another way of seeing this, however, is through the lens of subtraction. Because what it means is that subtracting uh, black, the kind black from black woman, doesn't give you woman, right? Or, you know, subtracting being oppressed as a black person from being oppressed as a black woman does not leave, uh, in the end, being oppressed as a woman, right? The, the, that, the subtraction operate, operation doesn't necessarily work, right? So again, another instance where the notion of subtraction, I argue, can play a role. Okay, the last example of subtraction I'm going to give is concerning the real gender assumption. So, um, for, for uh, this, Dan from Barnes talked about this. So, for reasons of social justice, we sometimes, we should sometimes say that Charlotte's a woman, even when Charlotte's not a member of the contextually re relevant gender kind. So, you know, it's oppressive to do otherwise, right? And, and there's reasons they give for why that's the case. I'm not going to talk about those reasons. My point is just that if they're actually right, then it means that there are some cases where we should subtract the metaphysics of woman from our ordinary assertions. So when I say that Charles is a woman, some context, um, I should not actually intend to mean or try to communicate that uh, Charla is a member of the well, I mean, gender kind of have to mean something else, right? And the thing I mean, presumably, is that Charles is a woman except Right, the property woman doesn't exist, or except she doesn't meet the membership conditions, or whatever. There's something, something we're supposed to take out from our gender assertion um, when we use such assertions, right? For reasons of social justice. Okay, so I, I, I've gone through a bunch of cases, and there's a question of what those cases have in common. This broad notion of subtraction. So I'll just go over them and have a little calculus here of social kinds. So. Gender minus gender domination um, can give you gender star. So this is an example of revising uh, genders, right? Subtracting certain things in order to get uh, something else, a slightly different gender kind or a slightly different social kind. Uh, the other case with agential identity was a case where we can use um, subtraction as a tool of analysis. So take Charlotte has the social identity of woman and you subtract out Charlotte being socially recognized as a woman and maybe you get, in the end, Charlotte has the agential identity woman, right? So it's, in this case, we get to the notion of agential identity, but we get to it by subtraction. Now we'll look at intersectionality. So uh, this case where subtraction doesn't, doesn't succeed, right? But it's illuminating that it doesn't, doesn't succeed. So take the kind black woman and you simply subtract away from it black. You don't get woman, right? If, if black woman is an intersectional kind, you, you can't subtract black from black woman and just simply get the kind woman. Similarly with the oppressed the black woman, oppressed the black person, oppressed as a woman. Finally, in a real gender assumption case, we found that in some cases, um, Charlotte is a woman should mean Charlotte is a woman minus there's a property woman, right? So um, I'm subtracting out there being a property woman from Charlotte being a woman. Okay, so in each case, you have this broad notion of subtraction. And I think it illuminates these things in different ways. The question, however, is how do you make this broad notion of subtraction rigorous, right? I mean, we, you know, speaking very generally, it's, it's very broad, vague thing so far. How do we get down to brass tacks to understand what this actually is? Luckily, right, the notion of subtraction has been defined in, um, in the literature as logical subtraction. So a logical subtraction, the theory of logical subtraction makes rigorous the idea that we can subtract the contents of one sentence from that of another. So uh, this, this idea is recently, it's, it's responsible, uh, Steve, Steve Diablo and Kit Fine are responsible for reviving this notion of logical subtraction. And in their eyes, logical subtraction is an operation on propositions. So give me two propositions A and B, you construct A minus B, and A minus B is going to be uh, the content of a minus b is going to be called the logical remainder a minus b is the logical remainder of a and b so for instance in this things that steve talks about um so steve Dallow is very interested in mathematical uh, nominalism so he's 
interested in uh, this idea, for instance, that, okay, imagine it being true that there are nine planets, right? Now, imagine it being true that nine planets, except there aren't any abstract numbers, right? Just the world exactly like it would be if there were nine planets, except you're taking out the abstract numbers. This would be a nominalistically acceptable act, a concrete world, right? Or another example he gives is uh, taking knowledge, right? And then subtracting away true belief, right? So imagine a state that's just like knowledge, except true belief is, is gone from, it, right? What happens then? You, you seem like you have another state. Um, these are cases of kind of logical, these cases of logical remainders. And again, these, strictly speaking, these are supposed to be sentences, but I've been doing shorthand um, for the sake of space on the slides. Uh, but they give a theory of this. Now, what's the theory say? Both uh, Yablo and Fine give an account of logical subtraction in terms of truth makers. So a truth maker is something that makes a sentence or proposition true. Um, so roses are red. Um, the sentence is true because there are facts about red roses. So a fact about one particular red rose, fact about another particular rose, and so on and so forth. Um, there are also false makers for sentences and propositions. So um, if roses are red is false, then maybe there are blue roses. And that's the reason why they're false. So there's a fact about a particular blue rose, a fact about another particular blue rose, etc. Right? Uh, if there are enough of them, presumably rows are red and will actually end up being false because there are a bunch of blue roses, right? Um, okay. Now let's suppose that the meaning of a sentence is a set, is a set of possible truth makers. So the content of rows are red is a set of possible truth makers for roses are red. That's how, how the idea is supposed to go. Okay, it's a, it's a set of possible truth makers for uh, roses are red. Now, here's the theory of logical remainder. It's given by um, uh, Kit Fine. Steve Yahweh has a different, different theory, which I'm not going to go into. It's a little more complicated um, and, and the details don't matter right now. I just want the simplest theory to illustrate the idea of social kinds of traction. So, uh, Fine says, look, let the subject matter of Q, some proposition Q, for instance, be the fusion of every possible truth maker of Q. Right? So we're putting together all these things. And let P minus Q be the result of subtracting the subject matter of Q from every truth maker of P. So what, so this is a definition of logical remainder. What are some examples of this? Okay, concretely. What this would mean, if you take knowledge and minus true belief, this means for every way of making it true that someone has knowledge, right? So for every truth maker for the claim Kevin has knowledge, I'm going to remove the parts of that truth maker that concern true belief, right? Because um, these are states of affairs. I'm, I'm removing states of affairs from others. Also, from every way of making it true that there are nine planets, for instance, so take all of the truth makers for nine planets. I'm going to go through each individual truth maker and I remove all the parts about abstract numbers. So what's happening here? is that the uh, truth makers end up having a, a myriological structure so that I can combine them and remove them as necessary, right? And, and, and uh, Fine and Yablo give more detailed theory where they actually talk about recursive definitions of truth makers or, and they talk more in detail about the, the myriology, myriological aspects of this account. Um, I, I'm keeping it very simple. My claim is just, look, P minus Q to understand that you're just taking um, the subject matter of Q and you're taking it out of every truth maker of P. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, what goes forward, is to uh, use this notion of logical remainder for metaphysical purposes, right? And lose the notion of logical subtraction, mostly for metaphysical purposes with social kinds. So let's look at the applications uh, to end the, the, this presentation. So let P be Charles a woman, right? We're gonna talk about agental identity now. Suppose the truth makers for P include the fusion of Charlotte privately identifies as a woman, Charlotte wants to externalize her identity, and Charlotte is identified by others to be a woman. Right? Okay. Now suppose Q is Charlotte is perceived as a woman, which has the truth maker, Charlotte is identified by others to be a woman. Claim is that P minus Q is going to give us Charlotte has the agental identity woman. Okay. Why is that? Because the truth makers for P has this fusion that basically constitutes um, 
the two things that are required for agential identity, private identifies women and wanting externalized identity, includes one more thing, uh, being identified with others, which arguably is, is part of what it means to have a social identity. So it's a broader notion of social identity where you also get uptake. Um, and Q just, you know, remove, removes that last part to give us uh, having a gentle identity of woman. Now, again, this is, you know, a controversial analysis, so I can't guarantee, you know, I'm not going to argue for it here. My point is that in social, social metaphysics, we can have analyses that are kind of like this that illustrate, that illuminate interesting things in, uh, in social metaphysics via uh, analyzing things by subtraction. Uh, now let's talk about intersectional kinds. So let P be Charlotte as a black woman, right? If black woman is not in an inter intersectional kind, so let's say if it's not in an intersectional kind, then P's truth maker is the fusion of Charlotte's woman and Charlotte's black, right? If, if black woman isn't intersectional, it's easy. You take woman, you take black, you put them together, now you get black woman. Now suppose Q is Charlotte's black, and so that's going to have the truth maker, Charlotte's black. The non intersectional theorist predicts that P minus Q in this case is going to be equivalent to Charles a woman. But the intersectional theorist claims that it isn't, right? Um, the whole point of intersectional, the intersectional theorist in the sense I'm thinking of is that um, taking P, Charles a black woman, um, and subtracting the fact that uh, Charlotte is black does not simply give you Charlotte's a woman, right? So I, this illustrates um, what the failure of, uh, of subtraction means for intersectionality in a very clear way, right? I, you have, you, you can see the inner workings of what's happening in this case. Okay, and perhaps P has a different truth maker. It's not Charlotte's woman and Charlotte's black. Maybe it's Charlotte's a black woman where black woman, right, in the state of affairs is an intersectional kind that isn't reducible or something like that. Okay. Now let's talk about revising kinds. So let P be Charles a woman, and suppose the truth makers for P include the fusions of facts like Charles assumes most, most parental responsibilities, and assuming most parental responsibilities contributes to Charles' oppression. So in our society, um, we know that, you know, feminists have pointed out that uh, for, uh, individuals, women, assuming most parental responsibilities, and then uh, can, can contribute to gender oppression and domination. Now, that's, that's why it's in P, and we're assuming a kind of dominance count of being a woman. Now let Q be Charlotte subordinated W-wise, so being subordinated W-wise, subordinated in all the ways that dominance theorists take women to be uh, subordinated. Plausibly, removing Q from P ends up removing, uh, assuming most parental responsibilities contributes to Charlotte's oppression from, right, the truth makers of P. So what does it mean? I have a descriptive fact in Charlotte being a woman, um, and then I have a fact that's about oppression, right? Whenever you're subtracting the oppression or subordination from the gender kind, you're simply taking out, excising that part. And so in the end, you get something else. So um, in contexts where, where, where there isn't any kind of uh, oppression in, in virtue of assuming most uh, parental responsibilities, um, you wouldn't be a woman, according to Thomas Nearest, but you would be a woman star, right? So the idea here is I can uh, make use of this notion uh, of a woman-like notion beyond worlds where we have gender oppression. Okay. Um, the last example I have is a uh, linguistic subtraction, so I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to speed through this. Um, but the idea, I think, is that in some cases, saying P is a way of asserting P minus Q. Um, so CB I will talk about this uh, a lot, um, as well as others. In a case in which the metaphysics of woman does not matter, for instance, then Charlotte's a woman conveys Charlotte's a woman minus the property woman exists, right? And there's, there's a lot written, or there's, there's some stuff written on how this actually works. I'm not going to go into that because I'm going to focus on the metaphysics, but I hope you get the general picture. So in conclusion, the notion of logical subtraction can be used to unify and clarify issues in the metaphysics of social kinds. So we looked at it in terms of social kind revision, intersectional kinds, agential identity, and the real gender assumption. Given all of these applications, I think it's safe to say the notion of logical subtraction has earned its keep in the metaphysics of social kinds. And I hope that people consider using this notion um, uh, more in light of that.